Hi everyone, it is February 9, 2019. I'm going to read some of Barry Trower's confidential report on Tetra, strictly for the Police Federation of England and Wales. Barry Trower, who is a retired Navy, uh, Royal Navy officer, he specialized in microwaves and microwave weapons. He was asked to do research to find out if the Tetra microwaves would be safe for the police. Well, his conclusion was no, it should be halted. But in this report is an awful lot of very important information about microwaves. And he speaks about microwaves in general. Then he speaks about the Tetra system, the uh, seven point, uh, I'm unsure of the exact megahertz the Tetra system was using. But we are saturated, saturated in very dangerous microwave frequencies coming at us from all, all different sources, cell phones, cell towers, um, all of our gadgets today, Wi-Fi, smart meters. We are now living in a very toxic, dangerous environment. That is what has manifested. So I do want to read some of this material, and I'm also going to include some additional material and I hope as I read that you really think about your use of the cell phone. If you have Wi-Fi still, that you seriously consider getting rid of Wi-Fi and play, um, replace it with an Ethernet cord, which will give you grounded access to the Internet. If you have a smart meter, try like hell to get rid of it, but there are ways that you can reduce the amount of pulsating microwaves coming into your home. You can put up aluminum screening um, wherever the smart meter is on your home. Place on the internal wall right where that smart meter is, you know, a square, uh, at least a foot, foot and a half or two feet, place the aluminum screening and you can buy just aluminum screening in a, a hardware store, Home Depot, wherever. And you can cut out pieces. I would put uh, four pieces of aluminum screening inside. They have smart meter guards, which you can research to put around your smart meter outside because the smart meter is pulsating microwave frequencies outside and inside your home. Those outside your home, well, if you have them, have you noticed that some of the vegetation around that smart meter died? Well, if that is the case, if you have vegetation around that smart meter, um, that's what's happening to you inside your home. If that smart meter happens to be on the wall of a room in your house where you are spending an awful lot of time, if it happens to be on your bedroom wall, then relocate where you sleep and don't hang out in the room where that smart meter is because it is pulsating very dangerous frequencies. It does not matter that you cannot see them. They are there. This is, this is an incredible invisible weapon. So let me get into it. Barry Trower, what is all this really about? There are lots of different types of electromagnetic waves but they are all made of the same two things, magnetic and static. The only difference between the waves 
is their wavelength on the length of the wave and the number of waves that can be produced a second, i.e. the frequency. All of these waves are put into a table called the electromagnetic spectrum. At one end of the electromagnetic spectrum, you have the very short waves, namely gamma rays, x-rays, millimeter waves, 5G. At the other end of the spectrum, you have the very long waves, uh, namely radio TV waves from overhead power cables, and waves, the ultrasonic, uh, sonic, in that end, those are the extremely low frequencies that are being uh, used in the Gwen Towers, the Ground Wave Emergency Network, which Tetra, by the way, uh, was very similar to. Our Ground Wave Emergency Network, which was decommissioned in the 70s. Interesting, though, they didn't get rid of the Gwen Towers. Instead, they have been increasing all over the country because those extremely low frequencies that go through the ground or can be emitted into the atmosphere are used to, well, yeah, mind control populations. These waves can extend up to 300 feet. And the Gwen Tower is different from the cell tower. The Gwen Tower, you will see very long, very long antenna-like um, structures that have wires going all the way down to the ground. And these wires are in a 360. Uh, it, it's a complete um, 360 around the antenna. So these frequencies can be used the full 360. Think about the targeting of that region, 300 miles, a radius of 300 miles. But they're also directional, so they can use these uh, Gwen Towers for weather modification purposes. These towers are extremely dangerous. So are the cell towers. But the frequencies coming out of the extremely low frequency transmitter sites, and the military have these transmitter sites, Michigan, Maine, and other places around. Um, not every transmitter site is uh, easy to locate. But if you come across on the interstate an area where suddenly you are seeing, you're seeing a lot of these transmitters. Now, this is the military's transmitter site in Cutler, Maine. But you will see these. You'll see maybe 15, 20 Gwen Towers on one side of the interstate. You may see 15 or 20 right opposite, that is a transmitter site. And I, I can't remember exactly where on the interstate. I think it's in Maryland. Or it could be Pennsylvania. But I came across numerous times. And as I'm driving, I'm realizing, oh my God, I am driving right through a transmitter site of these extremely low frequencies. So this is the difference between a Gwen Tower and a cell tower. So if our country decommissioned the Tetra system that they may still be using in England, somebody's going to have to report back to me on that, why then did we in the United States start building these structures all over our country if our emergency system was decommissioned. Okay. Um, for purposes of mind control, for purposes of inducing um, illness in the population, and for weather modification. So 
The ultraviolet and above are known as ionizing waves, and there is no argument as to the damage they can cause when entering the body. Below ultraviolet is said to be non-ionizing, and this is where arguments occur between scientists as to whether or not damage does occur inside the human body. There is, uh, it's astounding to me that anybody can say on mainstream media, uh, media that, oh, what, there are very few studies regarding the biological effects of the microwaves that we now live in when thousands, thousands of studies, our military has studied it. Many agencies of the United States government have studied the biological effects. Decades and decades ago, they know the biological effects. There are numerous myriad effects on the body, damaging effects, but they do not, they, they just go with the thermal effects. So there are thermal effects. Very often you'll hear from people that are using their cell phone to their ear and suddenly their ear feels like it's burning. Uh, when you suddenly feel a sudden temperature rise, like a heat flash, you just got hit with a microwave. Um, but they never talk about the non-thermal effects. Well, those have been studied, and there are uh, a tremendous amount of them. But I want you to really listen to this for those who don't get you know, what is happening when these waves come into our body. And they do. They penetrate the human body. So you're living in Wi-Fi? <laughs> You're living in a microwave soup. You're living in a microwave oven. That's what you are doing. And what happens when you think nothing is happening and you're just so happy about Wi-Fi because you can take that laptop anywhere and just, well, unfortunately, I see it. Many people still, the laptop is right smack on their lap. Too bad they called it a laptop. Um, but this is what is happening. You don't, you, you, some who are hypersensitive can actually feel the symptoms acutely. They can feel the heat from, you know, the laptop. And there are people who experience um, the turning on of a cell phone and the sudden high-pitched tone or earache, or sudden like jab to the head, that's all from these frequencies. Now, there are people who don't feel acute symptoms. It does, it, that does not mean that these waves are not coming into your body. So, in having summarized thousands of research papers, related to these microwaves, Barry Trower explains very clearly, we being water-based animals act like aerials to these waves. As the waves go into our bodies, an electric current is generated inside our bodies, which is how aerials work. Waves come in and electricity is generated. The traffic in our bodies, namely, see, you, you've got an awful lot of traffic going on 24-7 inside your body. Do you feel it? No. So the traffic in our bodies, namely hormones, antibodies, neurotransmitters, know where they are going because they also carry an electric charge. The hormones, antibodies, neurotransmitters know where to get off because there is a corresponding opposite charge at the site of a delivery, rather like the positive and negative ends of a battery. The problem is, if you have an electric current passing through the body, it can change this charge, either on the hormones, antibodies, or neurotransmitters, or the site of delivery. 
So you have your natural uh, electric charge operating in an ideal environment. It would be operating beautifully. So what happens when you have these artificial uh, electromagnetic waves entering your body? You have induced in your body another electric charge, which may or may not misfire. So an analogy of that would be if you were in the Paris on the underground system and you could not speak a word of French, but you had a map with the station name of where to get off and somebody, um, somebody just, uh, you know, deleted two of the letters from where you were supposed to get off. You may get off or you may not at the wrong place. This can happen in the body. The hormones, antibodies, neurotransmitters may get off where they are not meant to get off, or they may carry on and miss their target as a one-off. This probably would not be very important, but continuous interference over many years can lead to many illnesses. A similar effect is that the destination for some of these hormones, neuro neurotransmitters, antibodies is a surface of a cell where chemicals will pass through a membrane into a cell. If you think of a cell in our body, be it a brain cell, bone cell, whatever the cell is, as having a positive negative charge on the outside and the inside similar to a battery, the difference in these charges will draw the chemical into the cell or draw poisonous substances out of the cell. If the charge is changed on the outside of the cell, then necessary chemicals may not go in, poisonous chemicals may not go out. This is one main reason why our population has become so incredibly sick. So some of the illnesses caused by long-term low-level electromagnetic radiation, heart problems, blood problems, interference with bone marrow, tumors, calcium interference, and a 46 percent reduction in nighttime melatonin. You're not sleeping well? It is believed that during the daytime light going through your eyes passes a message to the penile glands in the brain which slows down the production of melatonin. At night when no light goes through our eyes the production of melatonin speeds up. Melatonin is believed to scavenge cancer cells and impurities in our body and boost the immune system. So if you have these artificial electromagnetic waves coming into your body and you have a 46 percent reduction in your melatonin you're not only subject to not having a good night's sleep but you all also you're now a higher risk of getting cancer um, as well melatonin is um, it affects the immune system. So what are some of the symptoms? Increased arthritis, skin problems, ear problems, risk of leukemia, childhood cancer, sleep problems, uh, depression, memory loss, difficulty in concentrating, mental conditions. Microwave radiation changes the permeability of the blood-brain barrier. Our brain has its own immune system, as does our body. The blood-brain barrier keeps everything that is designed to be kept within the brain inside it. Everything that is not supposed to be going into the brain, it keeps it. It's a barrier. Okay, so it protects the brain from external toxins. Um, it's 
the blood-brain barrier is rather like a sieve where only particles of a certain size may go through. Think about nanoparticles. Nanoparticles do go through. So we are breathing in all of the nanoparticulates that they are spraying down upon us. Um, and the tetrapulses, the pulsating frequencies, they, they absolutely you know, break down that barrier. But, he, it, but this is why pulsating frequencies are far more dangerous than if these microwaves coming out of Wi-Fi and smart meters and cell phones, cell towers all over the place, if they were a steady stream, they're still dangerous, but not as dangerous as experiencing these intermittent um, pulses of microwaves that come at us um, so uh, unpredictably. There's no, you know, the pulses don't come every five seconds. They're coming at us from, it, well, you never know when you're going to get hit with these pulsating frequencies. Your body can never adapt to that. It can't adapt to it. And there's lots of studies that show the pulsating frequencies. <clears throat> That's what's causing an awful lot of the problems within the human body. But it's not just the humans. It's dogs, it's cats, it's your pets, it's all life. Trees, um, plants, all life. All the four leggeds, every, er, all life. This is the environment that we have manifested. Um, and yes, the pulsating frequencies, neurological illnesses, headaches, dizziness, fatigue, miscarriage, infertility, um, epileptic activity, seizures, effects on the human EEG, um, heart, uh, palpitations and uh, problems, effects on blood pressure, depression of immune system, increased permeability of the blood-brain barrier, effects on brain electrochemistry, DNA damage in rodent brain, cancers in mice, these are some of the symptoms that were found in studies that we never hear about. But synergistic effects with certain drugs. There are medications that people take. And the microwave frequencies are altering the effects of the drugs. So when you think about all of the people on medications, and I remember doing a video and I was talking about this in particular and drugs that people were taking for a particular disease, the frequencies were actually causing the disease to get worse. So the drugs were not only ineffective, but the drugs and the frequencies created a worsening, a worsening condition within the individual. So, um, but I also want to say one more time, uh, well here, you know, think about the Gwen Towers. And I have no doubt, unless you live in a very, very rural area where not much is happening at all, you have Gwen Towers. Now, originally, the Gwen Towers, the Gwen system, all they needed were those towers that were looking like this, 300 miles away. One tower and then you'd have another one 300 miles away. Why? Because the wavelength was 300 miles. Well, why do we have them all over the place? Um, but the ground wave, all transmitters pass an electric current to the ground beneath them. 
If the ground is particularly wet, this has an adverse static effect on the animals concerned in and in farm animals. Uh, it can affect milk production or food production. Huge static charges are built up in the animals and every time they come across a metal object, the charge is discharged through the head. If animals are taken away from this environment, they recover very quickly. Yet in the environment of ground currents, they also become very sick very quickly. Now, I have stated this in other videos. I would take my dogs to uh, a coffee shop. I knew the owner. It closed at five o'clock. They had a beautiful, uh, huge backyard right along the river, Great Parrington, and it was all fenced in. So I would bring my dogs. They would play around, and I would walk around barefoot, and I would come home, and my feet were burned. It was pretty much often that my feet had a burn right above my ankle, but the burn line was as if somebody took a ruler and painted my feet red. And above that, I would have swelling right, sometimes right above my knees. I had no clue what was going on until I did research, until I found out about the frequencies and realized that that coffee shop, the backyard, I'm walking around bare, barefoot. And one day I look over and I see a Gwen Tower along with right next to it was this huge cell phone tower. I was a probably, oh God, oh, maybe a hundred feet away. I was getting burned from the ground wave frequency. So when people say ground yourself, walk around barefoot, I did research on the Gwen Tower, the biological effects, which the military funded. And sure enough, I was amazed. The worst condition the human being could put themselves in is barefoot, barefoot around a Gwen Tower. So um, be very careful where you are grounding yourself and make sure that you are nowhere near a Gwen Tower. Um, so a lot, a lot of very, very good information in here. Um, but they know, they know, they know what frequencies, you know, the brain frequencies. Um, the brain was already decoded decades ago. So this system in England, Tetra, the Hertz was 17.6 Hertz, Hertz waves per second. So that was known to interfere with the natural brain rhythm. Our brains generate their own waves within our head. One of those waves called beta waves is on a very similar frequency to the Tetra handset. You can bet that they are using frequencies here in the United States. No. I am going to say it's not a bet. They are. It's happening. It's being done to affect our, uh, the natural rhythm of our brains. So just think about entrainment. Okay. I'm sure you've heard that word. They use these frequencies to entrain. So think about uh, the buzzing that gets a lot louder at night. And so many people are having problems sleeping. Your brains are being entrained at night. What does that mean? I like Barry Trower because he really does make very simple analogies for one to understand it. So let's just listen to this. All right. Our brains generate their own waves within our head. One of these waves called beta waves is on a very similar frequency to the Tetra handset. Um, if you could imagine yourself jumping on a trampoline and somebody larger and heavier jumps on 
and dances at a slightly different speed, you will bounce at their pace rather than yours. When they jump off, you will still bounce at their speed. The jumping on of the person onto the trampoline is known as entrainment. And this occurs when these frequencies are used in close proximity to you. The frequency affects the beta rhythm. Now here they're talking about tetra, the 17.6 hertz. The frequencies that we are saturated in are affecting our brain frequencies. Can I say that enough? Probably not. But, uh, all right, so if they're affecting the beta rhythm of the brain, it will affect what the beta rhythm is responsible for. Namely, sound judgment in emergency situations. Entrainment is also followed by a phenomena called long-term potentiation. This is analogous to the person getting off the trampoline, leaving you dancing. Long-term potentiation has been known to last several weeks after the initial source has died down. So, the entrainment and the long-term potentiation the heavier set human being jumps off the trampoline, you're still going at that speed. But eventually, you'll get back to your speed. Well, what happens if the heaviest set person doesn't get off? You're going at that person's speed, always. What happens if the heavier set person gets off and you then... It takes time for you to think about a frequency on the trampoline. The heavier set person is a frequency on the trampoline. And then they flip off that frequency. Well, you're still going at that, at that speed, but eventually it comes down. But the heavier set person gets back on it. And then you start going back up. Well, that is what's happening with people who are using their cell phones. Um, the, the pulsating frequencies, the changing of the frequencies, um, it's all wreaking havoc on our biological system. Our brains are being battered every single day. But if they want to entrain your brain, they send an artist, artist, uh, artificial frequency and your natural frequency locks on to that artificial frequency. And at that point, they can change your frequency and get you to experience an awful lot of things that you wouldn't ordinarily. Um, this is... <laughs> This is being done. So you can read about, you know, the Russians uh, using microwaves against the American personnel in our um, embassy um, and how they were able to induce miscarriages, leukemia, cancers. And all of the different, you know, uh, operations, projects, but the frequencies they can use. Now understand, they can change frequencies, okay? So if they have a frequency, they know your frequency, the, the rhythm of your brain, they send the same frequency right smack into your brain. It locks on, and then they change it. 4.5, paranoia. 6.6, .6, depression, suicide. 11, manic behavior, anger. And 25, blindness. 
if aimed at the head, heart attack if aimed at the chest. They know the frequencies for hysteria, trauma, lust, murder, cancer, all of it may be induced. If they send eight, uh, then they can make you fall asleep. There's a lot more. Uh, I know I'm now 35 seconds, uh, 35 minutes in, but there is a tremendous amount of information that, yes, everybody needs to know, my God, I don't like living in this life. I, it, life has just so transformed. I am hypersensitive to these frequencies, and I have to tell you, I'm going down. I know a lot of you are going down. They are the cumulative effect. Forget about it. It's bad. You know, here, more harp, by the way. Harp can mind control. So, harp capable of bouncing low level continuous microwave radiation pulsed off the ionosphere to any, communicate, uh, any community in the world and may cause cataracts, leukemia, changes in blood brain chemistry, changes in blood sugar levels, blood pressure, heart rate. The paradox, of course, is how one system, how can one system of pulsed microwave radiation be used as a weapon to cause illness or death and at the same frequency and unless close range, a similar low intensity can be used as a safe communications instrument? Well, um, it's how that's the problem it's the changing of the uh, power intensity and the frequency it can be used for good or it can be used for evil you know low level pulse signals why are whales and dolphins beaching themselves because these low level pulsed sonic weapons that are being used in the ocean. That's why it's a mystery, right? Mystery, all of these animals beaching themselves and dying all over the place. No, we are damaging their delicate navigation systems. So there was uh, the use of these low level pulse signals and a minister of the Navy in England, um, he said this, the whales and the dolphins that beach themselves, it's their fault for being in that part of the ocean when they could have moved away. Wow. U.S. Defense Document writes, if the more advanced nations of the West are strict in the enforcement of stringent exposure standards, there could be unfavorable effects on industrial output and military functions. That's why we don't have standards. That's why the FCC has never changed the standards. We're still using 1996 standards when we have transformed the world with these with this wireless, all of the wireless frequencies. And more symptoms, neurological, cardiovascular, um, hemodynamic disturbances, which is uh, disturbances in blood flow to organs and tissues in the body. Um, Hypertension, changes in blood, headache, fatigue, menstrual disorders, depression, anxiety, and many, many, many others. The head of brain surgery at NASA said that the police in England should never use this uh, Tetra system. Do not hold these things close to your head. The police are guinea pigs. Um, Well, long-term exposure is the worst. So please, please reconsider. Reconsider your use 
of the cell phone, how many times you're using it, carrying it everywhere, using it in your car, which is extremely dangerous. Um, get the Wi-Fi out of your homes. If you have children, you have created a dangerous home environment for your children because your children's brains are developing. Their skulls are not as hard so the frequencies penetrate their brains far easier than they do adults. And their brains have not been completely formed. So you're allowing these children to be around these frequencies that they're saturated in, using their own cell phones and all of these iPads and sticking them you know, in front of, or giving them an iPad or whatever, you know, to watch cartoons on. Nothing could be more dangerous, but it's being done. Do want to point out that when you read these reports, these documents, go to the reference, you know, the end notes, very important, because this is where you will find an awful lot of the studies that you never hear about reported on mainstream media. Uh-uh. The studies they report are coming out of the telecommunications industry. Who else? Who else would be saying these frequencies are completely safe? No problem. Don't worry. But the telecommunications industry that is raking in billions and billions and billions, those are the studies reported by mainstream media. Hardly uh, independent studies. The next video I'm going to be sharing with you military use of mind control weapons. I hope that you circulate this. Thanks, guys.